The Psychology of Achievement by Professor Nigel McLennan Everyone seeks or has sought to achieve something, yet few of us are aware of or have been taught about the full psychology of achievement. What are the factors that influence or even determine achievement? Of those factors, which are the most important? Almost everyone is aware that setting goals is central to the psychology of achievement. A clear goal allows us to focus our minds, to direct our resources, to trigger us to imagine methods that will make success possible. There are at least two broad kinds of goal, purpose and objective. A purpose is a never-ending goal. If we take the amazing Marie Curie, we can imagine that her purpose was to understand radiation. She focused on that purpose for her entire life. After each breakthrough, she continued to seek further understanding of radiation. Her work has saved and improved countless lives. An objective is a goal that has an end point. For instance, Nelson Mandela sought to create equality of voting rights for all in South Africa. He and many others together achieved that objective. Apartheid was ended and South Africa is now a democracy. Many young people there refer to themselves as the born free generation. It is possible to have a purpose and objectives, that is, to set objectives towards one purpose. After each objective is achieved, another is started, and each objective follows the same purpose. We can imagine that Walt Disney had the purpose to entertain, and that each output was created after setting an objective. Having been coaching leaders and other peak performers for so long, a factor I have observed which is common to high achievers is that they have overcome multiple adversities, any one of which would have crushed others. It seems that adversity equips future leaders with abilities that they will need to harness in order to achieve their goals, such as emotional resilience, problem solving and persistence. What I am about to say may go too far, but it makes the point. Overcoming adversity may even be the school necessary for high achievement. Another essential achievement ingredient seems to be the development of an absolute commitment to an objective or purpose. Most of us have regular, casual wishes which go no further. A few of those throwaway wishes make it to the desire stage. Even fewer reach the motivational threshold that must be reached to take action. Even when that threshold is reached, it is not enough to succeed in most cases. A low level of motivation to achieve anything will be deterred by the first inevitable obstacle that is faced. What is required for high achievement is motivation to or beyond the point of absolute commitment. Here is how three of the factors in the psychology of achievement come together. When there is absolute commitment to a goal and exceptional levels of persistence, success becomes much more likely. Almost every achievement requires the presence or acquisition of the appropriate skill, knowledge and resources. Rarely is it fully clear at the start of a journey towards a goal what will be required for that achievement. Even when there is clarity, few of us have the assets required. That double whammy, lack of clarity and assets, stops many potential achievers in their tracks. Yet some people set off on their journey in full awareness that they lack the necessary clarity and resources. Why? Expectation. They expect that along the way they will acquire clarity of what skills, knowledge and resources are required. They also expect that when they have that awareness that they will somehow be able to develop or acquire the skills, knowledge and resources when they are needed. There seems to be an awareness in high achievers that they don't need to know the answers to all problems at the beginning and that each challenge can be addressed when it needs to be. That seems to contrast with many others who will not begin a journey to achievement unless they have certainty that everything required for success is in place and available to them. Underachievers tend to see all the obstacles and have low expectations of finding solutions. High achievers know that there will be barriers and expect that they will somehow find a way to address them. In the psychology of achievement there is a fine line between barrier anticipation and barrier induced inaction. Anticipating that barriers are insurmountable will end any potential achievement before it starts. 
When high achievers meet what to others seem like insurmountable barriers, they find a way through, over or under, or they change their method. Achievers seem absolutely committed to their goal and flexible on their method. That enables them to adjust course en route. When achievers experience what others call failure, they seem to see it as a learning experience. They have learned that the method being used or the means of implementation of that method will not deliver the outcome they sought. Accordingly, they learn what didn't work and why and change method or the means of implementation. Journeys to achievement are rarely quick. Along the way, I have observed high achievers take time to celebrate their incremental successes. Why? To keep their morale sufficiently high for the inevitable not-to-plan experiences. They will celebrate apparently small achievements such as completing the first step of a plan or achieving a sub-goal or acquiring a necessary skill or any step that takes them closer to their goal. Achievers tend to be optimists. They have a positive outlook on life, at least in the area they are striving towards. There is a big difference between having a positive mindset and being a Pollyanna. Achievers are realists who are committed to a goal. They are realistic positive thinkers. That means recognizing problems, setbacks and barriers, not denying their existence. They know that to achieve any goal there will be problems and the best way to achieve any goal is to be realistic about recognizing the problems and positive about finding solutions. The highest achievers I have the honor to serve solve one problem after another all the way to success and when they arrive set another goal and solve problems all the way to that success too. Part of their psychology of achievement is protecting their psychology of achievement. They surround themselves with supportive people. That does not mean yes people. It means people who will challenge and support, critique and create. I know of several chief executives who ensure that they have someone in their support team that they can turn to in order to be made aware of everything that could go wrong with any plan. High achievers know that some people are very skilled at anticipating problems, real problems, which others are blind to, and the best leaders I know harness that talent. That is not to say that achievers do not remove people from their lives who are toxic to their psychology of achievement. Negative influences and people are a real impediment to achievement. No athlete would want someone discouraging them just before competing or during their training. That is the case for achievers too. While they want feedback, it must be constructive. If their supporters can see that something is about to or could go wrong, the achiever wants to know and wants to know how to put things right. Indeed, that may be a big difference between achievers who want to contribute and faux achievers who want to be seen to contribute. The genuine achiever wants to know the truth and how to solve any problems. The faux achiever wants to be told everything is perfect. A factor common to all the achievers I have coached is self-responsibility. High achievers take total self-responsibility. They take responsibility for their thoughts, their emotions, their behaviors. But they don't go too far. They don't take responsibility for things beyond their control. Achievers find the sweet spot. They focus on what they can control and ignore what they can't. That enables them to make the best use of what they have. It empowers them. High achievers do what empowers them to achieve and avoid what disempowers them. The psychology of achievement is an area of life that is surprisingly and hugely under-researched, given its centrality to all our lives. All of us can improve our psychology of achievement if we know the factors. Which factors can we say are most important in the psychology of achievement? If I was to place a bet on what future generations of researchers would be able to prove, my top three in order would be setting goals, persistence, taking self-responsibility. What will you do to improve your psychology of achievement? <laughs>